you tell the children? They think she's working. They're going to have to know sooner or later. I'd rather they got used to her not being around before I tell them she's never going to come home. People are rather nervous at the moment. Fiona's upturned quite an apple cart. I lived with Fiona for 12 years, Silas. How could I not have known? Do you think I knew? None of us knew. Damn it, Bernard, I recruited her. I should have been the first to spot something. She was pretty thoroughly vetted by me. Oxford? Yeah, we slipped her in with the Trotskyites in 68. Perhaps some of it stuck to him. Was it you who warned Fiona? It was a nice piece of timing, well, we did it. Just enough leeway for her to slip out of the country, not quite enough leeway for her to get hold of the kids. You know, I might have done the same thing myself. Except it all tends to catch up on you in the end. Hugo Storch is alive and well and living in Mexico City. Storch was the name of a maths teacher we had at school in Berlin, a diehard old Nazi. Hugo was the first name of a famous profiteer he used to rant and rave about. So? Hugo's second name was Stinnes. The KGB bloke who nobbled you in East Berlin? Exactly. This office put out an alert for him. Well, you don't have to tell me that, old boy. I signed the alert myself. We do try to keep our fingers on the pulse. Vern is trying to tell us in his oblique way that Erich Stinnes is in Mexico City. And what's Werner doing in Mexico? He's on holiday. This Fiona business could pull this whole office apart. You do realize that, don't you? Brett's lost his Brahms empire. Desk and staff in search of a role. There's no more dangerous an animal the length and breadth of Whitehall, believe me. He's trying to muscle in on me, Bernard. And you. Do you know what he said the other day? That the protection of your children was costing the British taxpayer the equivalent of an exocet every ten days. It ought to be cheaper to have them put down. Chagger? No, oh, thank you. I mean, what's your friend Werner want? Stinnis is on our wanted list. Werner's telling us where to find him. Now we're getting paid, I suppose. You're my department head. I'm reporting it, that's all. I'm sorry, sir, Mr. Sampson. All right, I'll, I'll write that. Who about this for you? I'm sorry, sir. He is the German dead. Oh. Uh, look, the index name is, is, is Norman Strasser, Major Eric Stinney. Okay. Yeah, well, that name and rank better, by it. Well, it is your own German desk intelligence, Vicky. Looks pretty silly if they got the name wrong. <laughs> when you were arrested, the first time you saw him? I saw him the night before when Rolf Mauser got picked up. Here we are, sir. Yes, would you be a dear and run it on the thingy for me? I'm a... We're good at all this technology, Lark. Yes, sir. Oh, who arrested you, then? I met up with Major Stinnis in the middle of a wood. Well, what happened, for God's sake? He had a gun and I didn't. Yeah, that was basic as that, was it? So then he took you down to Normanstrasse for interrogation? No, not exactly. He'd been told to leave me alone until someone else arrived. All ready for you now. Thank you. Oh. Fiona. Well, the 
sod all here. Oh, really? About as much information as on the back of Werner's postcards. We'll hop on a plane, check it out. What, Mexico? Hmm. Don't just jump on a plane to places like that, full of diseases. Have to have jabs and things. Tell me, how did you react to Fiona? He was very, very surprised. Yes, well, even I can't write a memo on what we got here. But see if you can't bump it up a bit. I mean, flesh him out. Unfortunately, everyone's queuing up to pick your brains. Debriefing is often like that. You also have come to pick my brains? Major Erich Stinnes, KGB East Berlin. Only a name, I'm afraid. For a Russian, he's quite Berlinerish. Been there a long time, married a local girl. But I never met him. Did you ever hear mention of my wife in Berlin? Your wife was too important for the Berlin office. She must have been run direct from Moscow. I imagine her arrival in Berlin would have been something of a shock for you, Mr. Stennis. You can't be serious. Mexico City. For two postcards and three lines of CB. Someone obviously thinks we can find something out. Brett Rensler. And the DJ. Why me? I've hardly been trusted to walk home alone for the past few weeks. You're the only man in London who can positively identify Stinnis. So, you care to peruse that? An armful of needles. And then tack off some tequila for you and me, Bernard. Don't believe it. so long as they don't belong to the cousins. Yeah, the cousins are very knowledgeable. After all, this is their backyard. I don't suppose the Mexicans quite see it that way. No, I suppose not. But the CIA would be sure to get to know that you're here. Yes, on balance, I think we are obliged to cooperate, at least formally. Why? Afraid of getting your hands dirty, Samson? Too damn right, tip tree. Here are the keys to my car, Dickie. Take care of them. I'm rather fond of them. I should get to know that you're here. 
Yes, on balance, I think we are obliged to cooperate, at least formally. Why? Afraid of getting your hands dirty, Samson? Too damn right, tip tree. Here are the keys to my car, Dickie. Take care of them, and I'm rather fond of them. Oh, Henry's all right. I never knew him very well at Balliol, but he's quite sound. Kill your bloody burner if he's brought us here on a wild goose chase. Makes a break for the office. <laughs> Maybe you. You've got nothing to lose. For a dozen people after my job. You'll let your sweet Fanny Brett will have a firm foot inside my door by the time we get back home. Samson Liebling, my oldest friend and colleague. We have schon in der Schule zusammen Morgen gespielt. Oh, and Zina, this is Mr. Croyer. Dickie Croyer. It's local. I hope you had a pleasant flight, Mr. Croyer. Yes, Dickie, please. One postcard from me and both of you arrive. I'm flattered. Two. Two postcards. So, tell me, where exactly did you see this Stinnis chap? We met him at the Kronprinz. Conference. A club for German businessmen. Real German beer and good German food. How do you know it's him? It is Stinnes, 100%. And on his army Maybe your Erich Stinnes is even more important than you think. Only the top of the KGB get Western credit cards. Yes, I'm afraid we do have to make a positive identification. That's why I brought Bernard here with me. Yes, that's him, all right. Does it mean you can go back home to London now? <laughs> Let him come back and have a meal first. Lovely house for a holiday, Mrs. Vulcan. Belongs to Paul Biedermann. Uh, he was at school with us in Berlin. The only one who ever made any money. You know, of course, this Stinnitz could be running agents into California. Silicon Valley, something like that. Mm. I think we could get in ahead of our American friends. Thank you, that looks good. Could you give us negotiating power in Washington? We could get good material on KGB penetration just about anywhere in the cousin's backyard. Stinnes only arrived here two, three weeks ago. If London Central is interested in Stinnes, it won't be on account of anything he might be planning to do in California or... Is it got a malarain for us? It will be on account of all things he did in Berlin the last two years. Do you think so? So I'll tell me if you're in trouble or not? Van is not a fool, Dickie. Point taken. The fact is, the people in London, they don't tell me everything that goes on. I'm just a chap chipping away at the cold face. Tell me that's when Stinnes. Well, yeah. He's, um... No. No, no. Yes, he's a loner. He probably would never have spoken to us in the first place. Except he likes pretty girls. He made out he thought he had recognized Zena from somewhere. My word, those chilies look good. Here in Mexico, 
The chili has sexual significance. A man who eats hot chilies is thought to be virile and strong. Oh, I love chilies. I always have had a weakness for them. You know, <clears throat> it's the small dark colored ones that really blow your head off. Tell me about Paul Biederman. He's from a wealthy Bullen family. He has travel companies. And property in Mexico. A 20 story office block in the city and a bloody great villa out on the coast. Mit dem Schmuck haben wir mal Fußball gespielt. Scheiß Uni und scheiß Klima. The coast where? Guerrero. How come you how come you know them, Bernard? The Spanish, you think. Oh, what was this cool with this? I'll help you. Ah. I excuse you in the kitchen. Ice cubes are recommended. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, the kids? Oh, they're under on guard. There's so many guns around them, I hardly get to kiss them goodnight. Do they know? Well, they think Fiona's working in Berlin, which is not very far from the truth, actually. The London Central is giving you a hard time. Yep. Everybody blaming everybody else, and most of them ending up blaming me. <laughs>
Matthias, uh, if possible is uh, repararlo, pneumatico? Si, sí, es posible. Bueno, uh, tengo seis, hay cerveza. En mi casa tengo un changar. Gracias. How far from here? It's a long way by car. The road is very bad. To walk. I feel the car. Okay. Biderman, a friend of yours? See. Si. Hier ist Maschine nicht. Ist doch einfach, einen Wagen zu verstecken. Schau mal danach. Mann. Hier lässt es sich wirklich aushalten.
Moi brother, sag ich, wie es geht. Fahr mich jetzt zurück in die Stadt. If you see anything in the road, run it over. Too many people get killed trying to avoid eyes. They see shining in the dark. Is that why you sleep in the jungle? Well, I thought maybe they'd come back with the daylight. Coffee? <laughs> I didn't see you arrive. Well, I was out shooting lizards. I hate lizards, don't you? Those Russians are like lizards. Especially the tall one with a German name. Boy, you really do have a fat life here, don't you, Paul? You know the journey a new window pane has to make to reach here. I didn't break your precious windows. No, I didn't stop them. I was hiding, Paul. Me and your pals are on different sides. That's something you may not appreciate too much. Coffee? Are you doing business with them? Them. The KGB, Paul. You know what you're talking about, huh? You're in this game yourself, aren't you? How did you get entangled? Well, what am I supposed to do? I've got half my family still living over there in Rostov. Am I supposed to tell the KGB to go to hell? So they take it out of my aunts and uncles? Yes, Paul, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, I did not. I do what they tell me. Nothing serious, I told them that. Just run up the mill stuff. Which is? Laundering money. They've got banks for that, Paul. Try again. Oh, come on, You know how it's done. Yes, Paul, I know the way it's done. Don't sneer at me! If I don't do it, someone else will do it. Not going to change the history of the world, is it? <laughs> don't ask me. You're the one that went to university. Anyway, it's going to be dangerous. You know what? I like it. I told them the British Secret Service was checking up on me. See? So they came out here last night to smash up a few of your plates. <laughs> Can you help me, Bert? Give me a list. London might find it useful. 
What do I get in return? I'll put a sacred tab on you. That means none of the other NATO intelligence units will touch you without telling us first. That'll get back to the Russians soon enough and they'll take the pressure off you. Oh. I'm not up for sale for the highest bid or bad. I want out. I'm not going to exchange a master in Moscow for a master in London. You do make me love. You really think you're the master spy, don't you? So I see. I thought we might get out of the carbon monoxide today. Combine business with a little culture for a change, don't you know? Would you mind? Please. Attending a CIA powwow on Berlin. We had an interesting chat about Stinnis, though. My God, Frank's got a fat file. Good old Frank. Stinnis. Apparently it's an operational name. Real name is Nikolai Sadov. He married a German girl. <laughs> that didn't go down too well in Moscow. Señor, que le agrada. Que le The number of human sacrifices they must have made up there before the conquistadores came. Great Cortez, when with eagle eyes he stared at the Pacific, silent upon a peak in Darien. I think he was stout, Cortez, wasn't he? And all his men looked at each other with a wild surmise. Not bad, Bernard, not bad. Surmise seems to be the operative word, doesn't it? Everything is muy complicado. Muy bloody complicado, actually. I mean, do you believe the stuff Biedemann was telling you? It's too silly a story for him to have made up. You think Stennis is over here to run him? Biedemann's monkey nuts. He'll be run by some stringer out of the embassy, not a KGB major all the way from Berlin. Exactly. And Frank and I are in agreement. He's on our side, Bernard. We are definitely going to enroll Stinnis. You're what? 
Oh, we burn it. We? It's your operation. I want the other pyramid in the background, please. London wants Stinnis enrolled. Hotshot like Stinnis? That's muy complicado, Dicky. We bloody dangerous, too. So we'll be muy careful, won't we? Are we getting any help from London? I thought you were the one who always liked to do things on his own. So Muggins takes the blame again, as usual, if anything goes wrong. If I was you, I should take the chance while it's there. You're not exactly persona grata with London Central these days. Oh, don't be such a fool. Re-establish your reputation with Stimmons. Ah, I thought we'd use the delectable Xena for the first approach. Bait on the hook for Stinnis. <laughs> I thought we'd keep it all a very soft sell. We'll just see how the cookie crumbles. Ah, now, unfortunately, I've got to meet a tedious CIA contact in Acapulco. So I'm desperately sorry, Bernard, but I'm going to have to leave you to sort out the bombs. Stinnis is big game, Bernie. No one is going to turn him in five minutes. If London really wants him so badly, I would knock him on the head and ship him out, rolled up in a carpet. Why so hard on the man? I like him. He hates my wife. Is it London really wants him? Or is it Dickie Cryer's idea? Dickie saw Frank Harrington in L.A. Dickie says that's where the decision was made. Anyone can talk Frank into anything. Okay, thank you. You know, Zena could be right about Frank. I mean, Brett Rensselaer has managed to get Dickie five and a half thousand miles away from his office in London. With the music playing. Musik begleitet, Stuhl Polonaise, huh? More musical desks than musical chairs, I think. Dear Dickie has suddenly realized he's got to get home fast before the music stops and with something more than just egg on his face. What makes you think? Aristinus wants to change signs. Well, that's what we've got to find out, Chachin. How? According to Dickie, the soft cell. Wait and see how the cookie crumbles. Whatever that means. It means Dickie sticks his head in the sand and his ass in the air and waits for the Big Bang. And we make the bag. Does it mean he's taking me back on the payroll? Not in so many words, no. You want me to use Zena to hook him, don't you? Men do react to her, then. Oh, fine, my little friend, don't. When will we be paid for finding him? Das wird sich zeigen, Schatz, aber es braucht Zeit. We'll not do any more without payment. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about money. And to my knowledge, London has never paid bounty money. Cryer said there would be a fee. If he was here, you'd be lucky if he offered you the airfares. <laughs> I'm not looking for charity. We are asking for a finder's fee. $16,000. And if we don't receive it, I'll make sure Aristinus never believes a single word you say. I think you're missing the point, Frau Volkmann. I would advise you not to say anything to Erich Stinnis. It would suggest to him that either you or Werner have anything to do with London Central. If the KGB get wind of what we're doing, it won't be just Werner's business interests they're full clothes on. We're not talking about a football transfer. The price of failure is somewhat higher. Let him make the first move. We wouldn't want anyone to think badly of you. Look. 
Do I have to say I'm sorry or something? She loves her work, Bernie. He picked her up at the Kronprinz. Bought her a flower while my back was turned. Turned for you, of course, Bernie. Damn queen and country, but it still makes me feel like something dirty. How did Stinnis make the first move? The damn Russian behaved like he owned the bloody place. He's so arrogant, and of course so polite. Verdammte Ausgitar so als ob ihm alles hier gehört. Er ist so arrogant und natürlich so höflich. Ich möchte Sie um die Erlaubnis bitten, Ihrer wunderschönen Frau eine Blume überreichen zu dürfen. I ask your permission to give a flower to your very beautiful wife. Yes, you smile, Bernie. But I felt like stuffing it down his throat. They started talking about Diego Rivera and Siqueiros. And dear Zena, of course. She thinks they are bullfighters. So we asked her out to show her the murals. Every day, all bloody day. Do you know how many murals there are in Mexico City? He's a naturally perfect companion. He's a walking guidebook. He explained every goddamn revolutionary symbol. When he saw Karl Marx, he recited the whole of this capital. Then it's lunch together. And an innocent walk in the park. <laughs> Nothing with that man is innocent. He asks me with a smile every morning to come with them. And every morning, for your sake, Bernie, I tell him I'm otherwise engaged. And thank him with a smile for looking after my wife so well. Nothing was said until yesterday. Then he suddenly started to talk about life in the West. Hello, Liebling. Hello. I told him today what you told me to tell him. It seemed the right moment. An English friend from me would like to meet him, I trust. An English friend of mine would like to meet you in confidence. Right, you'll move, Werner. Go with Sena tomorrow. Use my name with him. Make sure he knows which game board we're playing on. Arrange a meeting. Erich will choose his own ground. That's his condition. And wherever it is, I come along with you. It's our condition. I already know where it is. What? Wo? On Biedermann's boat. Biedermann? Tomorrow. That one is too late. Two days ago? Two whole days and you've said nothing. Excuse me, what do you think this is? A game of hide and seek? You're supposed to be handling stillies as and when and how I tell you. Come richtig up, Bernie. If you talk to Stinnis like that, he will drop you over the side of the boat. Turn back. I wouldn't climb alone on a boat with that gorilla. Nobody's asking me. I'm coming with you. You can't even swim. Anyone could be hiding on the boat. 
We know and Moscow knows. The best way to prevent an enrollment is to kill the enroller. Huh? Schlechter Sprechen. Sehr gut. Oh. Last week, over there, you were crying to me for help. Don't you start now. Nothing more to do with the Russians. No! Oh. It isn't me. It's them. Him. I knew nothing about it until last night. You could have picked up a phone. With him around here. This guy is as hard as a mountain. He walked right in, out of the jungle. He said he would tear out my lungs from the inside. Don't you worry, Paul. If he doesn't, I will. Paul tends to exaggerate everything. No surprises on the boat, Samson. Are you working out our fuel consumption to see if we might reach Sakhalin Island? Oh, I'm sure there are plenty of Russian trawlers that would help us on our way.
no one up there except the automatic pilot. Peterman has all the equipment. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I think you need a drink. Still drinking vodka orange? Wonderful, isn't it? Still drink scotch? Still allergic to boats? Only one person in the world knows that. It's all down in our files now. Excuse me, but you've gone to an awful lot of trouble if all you want's a fishing lesson. The backyard of the CIA. One always has to be cautious. This may be their backyard, Mr. Spiris, but I can assure you there's no danger you'll end up in American hands. I don't understand. What gives you the idea I want to end up in anyone's hands? I'm straight KGB. Kurima with no complications. There's no one in the world with no complications, Mr. Stennis, here. Why have you gone to all this trouble to talk to me alone, hmm? Because I thought you were offering me your defection. Thank you. Bitter. Jaws, Samson. There isn't a fish in the sea that some other fish isn't trying to eat. Warum eigentlich? Why me? You're the great wife that London seems to want to catch, Mr. Stimmis. You, you've been targeted. Starred as an exceptional enemy agent. Is that so? Come on. Don't tell me you were sent as the only British agent who could recognize me. No, I think I was sent as the only British agent you'd recognize. Why should I want to defect? Is London so stupid to think I resent the arrival of Fiona in Berlin? <laughs> She's a very smart lady. Your wife. By the way, Mr. Spinnies, are you married? You know damn well I'm married. You mean your files say that I fool around with girls? It's better to fool around with girls than sitting in my small little house, watching West German television advertise. All the things my wife wants and can't get. Yes, I would imagine the KGB would classify that as domestic instability. <laughs> You're right. They give you a black mark and send you on a leadership course on Sahelin Island. No wine, no women. Cold showers and long runs. A hundred miles is the nearest town. Sounds like a very strong argument for marital fidelity. <laughs> yes, until you get bored with it. Are you offering me divorce as a motive for defection? Yes. <laughs> if this was a serious negotiation, you would be expecting me to defect with high-class material. That would be the only price acceptable. In return for which? Oh, money. New identity, house, usual things. 
boat. There's pretty young girls, a clean divorce. Very neat. Who's pulling whose leg, Mr. Stennis? of material would London expect? Well, they'd expect you to break a network. A real network, not just a list of names who've already flown the coup, not leaving a forwarding address. That would just make everybody bad-tempered and they start to think you were still on salary from Moscow. You make everything crystal clear. I'm not instructed to offer specific terms. You do understand. Why indeed should you? Has our conversation not been entirely theoretic? A charade. It takes a minimum of three people to play charades, Mr. Stiglitz. I'm told Zainab Falkman's a very good player. You will communicate nothing of our conversation to your embassy in Mexico City? No, of course not. Except to say that terms were offered to me and refused. You can tell them to wire that back to London in their usual coding. Usual coding? My colleague Pavel Moskin will then find out where I've been. Your embassy in Mexico is not as secure as it believes itself to be. You can have that one for free. Thank you. A gesture of good faith, if you like. Who knows, maybe even a down payment. Him, Bernie. That's not the reason why, Bernie. You know the way London expects us to work. I don't trust him. I don't distrust him. He's probably feeling exactly the same about us. He's probably wondering if we aren't trying to lead him into the jam pot and get him drowned by his own side. Did he look to you as if he was biting? What, at my wife? He's not asking the right questions, not yet. That's a game, Bernie. Being in the right place at the right time. But what's he doing in Mexico? He bet he's not here for Biederman. Maybe he's here for Dickie Cryer in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Dickie Cryer? We'll probably find Dickie Cryer on some expensive beach somewhere with a cocktail in one hand and a pencil and paper in the other, making little sketches for the report he's going to write on a plane going home after he's picked my brains. As well, tell me something I didn't know. Look, if this Stennis thing works out, Dickie's going to take all the credit, right? If anything goes wrong, I get the blame. Right? Give it a wash and be as good as new. Oh, by the way, you're, are you in charge of security at the embassy? Yes. Uh, well, I think you'll find that the opposition have broken your Mickey Mouse codes. Mickey Mouse? They've been reading your signals traffic for at least three months.
Well, talk to me, Bernard. Talk to me. Is our Cossack for turning? Unfortunately, Dickie, things are never quite that simple. You mean we're wasting our time? Yes, probably. Is that all you can say out of five and a half thousand miles? And ten days hotel bills? I'm the one who's got to write a report on this before we get home to London. Sitting up on the plane all blood night, I suppose. Dennis is a pro, Dickie. He's hardly likely to give himself away in the first five minutes. Well, are there any positive signs? Yes, he's bored with his wife and the KGB frown on adultery. So do we, Bernard, so do we. Oh, I say. Reminds me of that impertinent girl in the yellow submarine. Who, Gloria? I mean, say we've been there already. Worker bees, Dickie. We all stick together, making honey. I'm wasting your time, do you? No. For a bit of damage to my motor, Dickie. Well, stick it to claim, Henry. Stick it to claim. Well, thank you so much for all your support. <sighs> Has the intelligence department made up its mind yet? Mm. Or are we still improvising? Well, we do know that Stennis is going to be back in Berlin next week. I heard. They want me back there too? I want you there, Werner. With Tsena. He seems to trust her. Trust or lust, Bernie? What's the difference? So you're asking your friend to pimp his wife? <laughs> For queen and country. Werner? Not my queen. And not my country. We've adopted you, Liebling. Look, Cuidado, Cuidado. All I am saying, Bernard, is that I have a report to sweat out, and I want to know if we stand a 50-50 chance. Certainly no better. Is he worth department time a month? She's really a potential defector, yes. All right. How much is he going to cost us? Dickie, I doubt if money will come into it. Men like Stinnis don't get where they are without a fair amount of indoctrination. What? You mean he's a hard-nosed comic? He's establishment, but not necessarily a believer. Look, a major like Stinnis can barge into the office of any commander-in-chief without even bothering to knock. And no one in the West has the kind of power he can enjoy. Offering him a comfortable life? Yes, well, I think he's probably seen enough of our own defectors to know what kind of life that can be. Oh, really, Bernard? How can you compare the life of a defector coming West to that of one going East? All they have to offer is a perverted ideology and a medieval social system. Seems to have attracted its fair share of voluntary followers. We have a free society and a free press. <laughs> For what that's worth. Freedom to protest. Within limits. The freedom, Bernard, to say anything we damn well please. The freedom, Richard, to starve. So whose side are you on? Look, all I'm trying to tell you is that I don't think still is the kind of man who's going to sell his soul for a wall full of hi-fi components and a microwave. That's all. Okay? I went to Mexico. Did you see Mummy? Mummy's in Berlin, silly. I'm not silly. Yeah, look, what's this? I brought you some things back from Mexico. Uh, that's yours. You know what they are? Have you ever seen them before? No. 
They look like rugs, but actually they've got holes in them. And you can stick them over. Go over there and see. Oh, that's great. Where are you? Come sit here. That's good. Isn't Mummy in Berlin, Daddy? Yes, Mummy's in Berlin. She rang up. She what? Mexico's where they play football. Mummy sent you her love. A sombrero for me, Bernie. You sleep enough as it is, Julian. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, Dicky had the entire contents of his in-tray sent to you. Oh, uh, Brett wants to see you in his office. Uh, I love the clock sharp, Bernard. DG. First thing Monday morning. And a bloke called Kimber Hutchinson kept calling. He sounded like your bank manager. He's my father-in-law, actually. Yes, yes. Uh, so I eventually gathered. He's trying to summon you to a family meeting next week. HPWT. What? Julian Mackenzie, have passport, will travel. Or would if you could? I already told you, Julian, you're overqualified. Cambridge Firsts get recruited only for their brains. <laughs> brains in here. Cheers. Cheers. You, um... You probably heard I took a little of the load off Dickie Cryer's shoulders while he was in Mexico. For the time being. Something to take the place of Brahms, is it? Yes, sir, I suppose you must find yourself at a bit of a loose end. I want to make it clear that although I'm senior to Dickie, that doesn't mean he's not still in charge of the German desk, okay? Okay. Okay. Any observations on this guy, Stinnis? Oh, none, I'm sure, that uh, Dickie hasn't already reported. Mm -hmm. Off the record. We made contact. Who made contact? Dickie makes it sound as though he negotiated with Stinnis face to face. <laughs> no one's negotiated yet, Brad. Do I have to drag every word out of you? What did he say? How did he say it? Well, if he defected, he'd be a good source. But the chances are it'll never happen. You're not saying drop the whole thing. If you and Dickie in the department have got nothing better to do, go ahead. It's time Dickie saw some experience at the sharp end of the business. Is that job intended for me too? You've never seen a real Russian close to, except over cucumber sandwiches at embassy tea parties. <laughs> Stinnis is a real pro. You'll enjoy talking to him. There's some uh, routine stuff here we have to go through, if you don't mind. Why should I mind? Well, you might mind talking to me. It's about your wife. One or two remarks you've made seem to suggest that you might have suspected Fiona and myself of having had an affair or something of that nature. I appreciate the fact that you made no mention of your suspicions in your formal interviews. There were no grounds for your suspicions, I do assure you, but in written reports, kind of bad. These are recap questions from Mr. Barrett, Cabinet Office. You never suspected your wife of working for the KGB prior to your mission into East Berlin? That is correct. Not even if we go back years and years? Especially if we go back years and years. She was my wife. No suspicions. None at all? There's something you should remember, Brad. There's something you should all remember. Fiona was cleared by internal security and regularly vetted by the department. My failure was no greater than the department's failure. If I hadn't flushed her out, 
she'd still be working here and still passing your secrets back to Moscow. Our secrets? Let's rather say our secrets. Unless you're also thinking of leaving us. I don't mean to make things more difficult for you, Bernard, but the moment family becomes a departmental issue, it has to be assumed that your private and professional lives are somewhat out of control. you sloping up here on the Sabbath. I've had to put up with it all. Tess is keeping as far away from her father as possible. We only see her to eat and sleep. Jane's in the garden. Charlie! Charlie! Come here! Jane? Hello? Hello, Bernie. Mm. So nice to see you. I still can't believe what's happened. Where did we go wrong, Bernard? Please don't go blaming yourself, Jane. Go away! Go away! David's up galloping at the moment. He's taken Fiona pretty hard. He's... He's looking for someone to blame. It's not going to give you an easy time. Well, I just have to wear my thick skin now, won't I? Have you got one at the moment? Bloody horse went lame. Bernard! David. Long way to come, just for Sunday lunch. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't get here any earlier. <laughs> Where were you? Bailey Moore. Thought we were meant to be riding together. I couldn't find you, Daddy. Now Max dropped a shoe at Clennell's Gap. I practically had to carry the light of hell. Rather heavy, I imagine. Been thinking about that new place of yours. Not what I'd call a sound investment. Suppose you realize you're paying the equivalent of 150,000 pounds per room. Uh, might look good on headed note paper, but a penthouse these days is for American PR or call girls. Besides, Inner cities are not the place for children anymore. The days of Peter Pan are over. Children? Wouldn't you say so, Bernard? Have to be frightfully careful how and where you bring up kids. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. You've discovered my little secret. I always start off in photographs. 
Well, Michelangelo would have used a camera for the Sistine Chapel if he'd had a chance. Thank you, Marjorie. I can never draw horses. It's not fair. No artist loved horses as I do. All knew so much about them. But even tracing it on a photograph, it doesn't come right. Maybe you should trace paintings, not photographs. And trace a stub, you mean? Not a bad idea. Learn whatever his trick was. It is all tricks, you know. Jotting down your figures. They don't look too happy. Of course, I'm only guessing at your salary. The equivalent, I thought, of a principal in the admin grades of the civil service. And uh, Fiona would have had more or less the same, so that's halved your income for a start. But uh, you've also lost the benefit of her trust fund. I've frozen all assets, I can lay my hands on. It strikes me you'll have to sell the house. Uh, find yourself a small service flat. Bedroom, kitchen and living room, maybe not even a kitchen. I'll give you the names of a couple of house agents I know in London, do business with. Don't want to go to the first people you come across. Too many Israelites in that line of business. Oh, I forgot. You like Jews, don't you? No more than I like Scotsmen or Saudi Arabians. Your specifications for the service flat left out a nursery. As I was coming to that, Bernard. The children. And I think you will agree unreservedly about this. Are the most important single factor in this whole tragic business. Yes. I'm a socialist, Bernard. You know that. Never made a secret of the fact. My father worked hard all his life and died at his workbench. Something I can't forget. Yes, but your father owned the workbench and the factory in which it was situated. But I've never had any dealings with communists. And when I heard the owner had been working for the Russians all these years, I sent for my lawyer and disowned her. I obliterated her from our lives. You've got to say something about the children. Fiona's gone for good. She's never coming back. It's no good holding on to the house in the hope you'll one day resume your life together. If Fiona did come back, she would have an extremely long jail sentence. Not to return home. Oh my God, yes. That would be the final disgrace. And I say your own social attitudes had something to do with her change of mind. She was very well brought up, you know. As I intend her children to be. Her wife and I have discussed the whole matter at great length. We are prepared to have the children. They will have their old nanny back. And of course I can afford proper and discreet security precautions indefinitely. Naturally, you'd have access whenever you wish. Thank you, David. But I'm afraid I intend to keep the children with me. And, uh... Where are they this weekend? They're with my mother. She's really far too old to cope with young children. You see, Bernard, here in the country, we can offer them an almost idyllic life. 
Oh, you must admit they would like it here. Grandparents do have rights, you know. Think it over and don't say no. I don't want to find myself fighting for custody of the children through the law court. I pay far too much money to lawyers as it is. You'd be wasting your money, David. The court will always give custody to the parents. Don't be so sure. I'm advised that my chances of legal custody are good. It's just that I don't fancy paying a lawyer lots of money to tell the world what an evil and irresponsible son-in-law I have. And I don't suppose your department would exactly encourage you into a long and noisy legal wrangle, having gone to so much trouble this far, to hush the whole thing up. Where's George, isn't he right? George is being moody with me. Usually means you're having an affair with someone, doesn't it? I wouldn't tell you if I was. You're a single available man now. And one I've always loved and desired. Good girl, Tess. I saw Giles Trent the night he was killed. I told him goodbye, just like he said. I think that cured me of men forever. Yes, well, it's lucky you didn't walk up the stairs with him that evening. That could have cured you of everything forever. Bernard, I had Fiona's Mercedes picked up while you were away. Better to get rid of it. Too many unhappy memories for you to want to use it, I'm sure. You think of everything? I do try. Don't you dare give in to him. He screwed my life up. He screwed Fiona's life up. He's not going to screw up the lives of your children as well. Oh, Mother told me what he was going to tell you. She's against it, but she won't fight it. She gave up fighting him years ago. So did Fiona. Fiona joined the communists instead. Fiona spoke to the kids on the phone the other night. Yes. She spoke to you as well. She doesn't want the kids to come here, and she'll do anything to stop it. She doesn't want them anywhere near him. I think I'd kill my sister for hurting you so much. I used to say it still hurts. you a lift back to London. Some of us have Monday mornings catching up with us. Oh, no welfare meeting, Samson. Welfare, sir? It's part of my job, I believe. Isn't it? You've been in the Caribbean. Mexico, sir. Precisely. Successful hunt? Too early to tell yet, sir. Good. I mean, I'm glad you're being cautious. Your father was always a cautious man. Anything you want to say? Uh, about Mexico, sir? About anything. No trouble. Silas Gaunt is always very concerned about the welfare of his protégé. And be rather insistent about it. I told him we could take some sort of child allowance out of contingency as a temporary measure. And of course we have a very good boarding school for all ages and sexes. I'd rather keep my children at home. Precisely. Exactly what I said to him. Silas can be a boring old fart, really. Oh, no disrespect. 
Fine brain. Fine brain. Too much solitude. Ah, there you are. You might have financial problems, Samson, but you can't possibly submit expenses like this anymore. You'll have to itemize, correlate, justify, append receipts. But they don't give receipts in Mexico anymore. We have new auditing systems. The slimlining and reduction of unnecessary expenditure taxpayers' money. We are not the BBC, you know, Samson. Good housekeeping essential. Files signed out by registry, Mr. Sampson. I'm afraid they're all going on a floppy disk. It's the point of computers, isn't it? Yes, sir. Call in Bernie Love. We're very democratic on the third floor. You've got nothing better to do, Julian, than you can run that little lot along to Dickies. Yes, sir. That's quite a mess, sir. Not in there. You, you want to go at sorting it out? Third floor, that's operations. Well, do you good to blink in the daylight? Blink in the daylight? You spend most of your life underground, don't you, in a yellow submarine? Oh, yes. Yes, it's awful. I'm afraid I got myself stuck with it. Did you come into the department on computers? No, no, language. My parents come from Hungary. Oh, Sie haben in Ungarn gelebt. Mein Vater kam 1965. Ich bin in Zweymouth geboren. Well, where do you live now? Epson. <laughs> Well, it's quite a luxury to have fluent German on the desk. Uh, do you want to go at sorting the rest of this out? This is operations. I'm attached to registry. Well, I'll have a word with establishments, if you like. Anything to get my head above ground, sir. Oh, OK. Yes, worker bees wearing Chanel number 19. Times they were changing, aren't they, Dickie? Brett has summoned Frank over to give him a Berlin rundown on Stinism. Oh, you knew that, did you? Well, I guessed he would. I'm not quibbling, Bernard, but Frank is German desk. It would have been usual to clear through me. Oh, damn it, I am quibbling. He must clear through me. Dickie, the department are assessing Stinnis. He could end up costing a lot of money. I don't think anybody's too worried about protocol at the moment. What do you mean, money? Well, we already owe Werner a big fat fee. Not off German funds, we don't. Oh, come on, we sent them back to Berlin, Dickie. They were in the middle of a Mexican holiday. You sent him back to Berlin. I merely said, use Zena as a go-between. I will not have establishments down on my head for overspending on unrelated expenses. <coughs> oh, dear God, I've got a bloody head cold coming on. All those changes in climate. <laughs> Dickie, you know, I think you ought to go home and lie down. Get Daphne to make you a nice hot whiskey and lemon. Yes, well, if you see Frank, you just tell him where German desk is situated. It's Dickie Cryer, extension 610. Oh, how are the kids, by the way? Why on earth do you ask? I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. Daphne asked me to ask you, and anything she's going to do to help, and all that sort of thing. And why don't you come to dinner on Thursday? Bring Chanel number 19. Home. Can we stay with Gran another day? She's made shepherd's pies too. There's plenty for you too, dear. We've been helping in the garden. Yes, I see. <laughs> Is everything I'm, I'm all right, Mother? Really? Everything's fine. I could have the children for two or three days if it's any help. <laughs> what are you doing? Gamps rang up. She said you're going to go and see him and ride the horses. Come on. 
He just rang for a chat. Hmm. It won't be just a chat next time. I'm afraid he's after custody of the children, Mother. I expect he wants you to back him up. Oh, dear. People get so dramatic, don't they? Frank Harrington's inside. It's so nice to see him again. Frank? The office knew you were coming here to pick up the children. Just trying to figure out what's going on. Nice to see your mother after so long. He's in Dickie. Hmm. He's miffed. Oh, Dick's a desk man. You're the file officer. Brett Rensler? Brett lost bronze. He's looking for another source. He could hardly play Stinnis all on his own, so he has to use Dickie on the German desk. Frank Harrington? <laughs> We've known each other a long time. 1945 in Berlin. Your father was one of the first men to take his family out to occupy Germany. I was touched by that, Bernard. So many of our chaps didn't mind at all leaving their wives. They were leading the plush life of the conqueror. There was nothing much you couldn't obtain for a price of a cigarette or a box of ration. But your father, he wanted his wife and his son out there with him. I respected him for that. And a lot else. What exactly are you trying to tell me, Frank? I want all this to come out right for you. Or what? You're bound to remain a prime suspect until cleared by first-class corroborative evidence. Listen, Frank, I was the Charlie that put the finger on my wife, remember? The one who tipped her off in time for her to get away. Perhaps that's how Moscow wanted it done. To leave you still here, highly placed. With a guilt-edged credential of having turned in your own wife. Playing devil's advocate, Bernard. Let's just say, if you were to show that you were unwilling or unable to enroll Stinnis, people might think that you didn't want us to get our hands on him. They might then ask if you had something to fear from his evidence. Has Fiona tried to get in touch with you? Only mine won't go at all. I've got to be at St. Mary Abbott's by half past or Matron will kill me. You couldn't give me a lift as far as the taxi, could you? Of course. Uh, yeah, go on. I'll be. I'm sorry to give you this trouble. I'd around my brother, but he'd be playing cricket today. Are you a cricket fan? Me? <laughs> no, for one reason or another, I never learned at school, so I'm afraid my knowledge of the game is somewhat limited. It's a more violent sport than people realise. I'm surprised there haven't been more fatalities. Fatalities? Well, wearing the helmets have helped, of course, but you see, a good fast bowler has to have the killer instinct. And in the heat of the moment, that should mean exactly what it says. <laughs> Qualified nurse, and the stuff in this hypo will take effect within seconds. 
please don't try to do anything heroic. Don't worry, this is not an attempt to abduct you.
the kids. Are they all right? Hi, Dad. Tess, listen. Have you seen your sister? Seen her? Well, she called you. Have you seen Fiona? When did she call? A couple of hours ago. Where from? Well, how would I know? Moscow, Berlin, wherever the hell she is. What's happened? What did she say? Well, that she misses the children. She wanted to talk about them. That's all? You have seen her. Not a word, Tess. Not even to George. No one must know she's been here. Oh, uh, George. Family politics. Your sister-in-law and our shared children. I was telling Bernard we're happy to have the children any time. Yes, of course. Anything for Bernard. Tell me, the PM sent for me. Panic at the ranch, World War Three. So how long has this been going on? Then? Weekends, most evenings. I've got something for you to do. Unofficial but dangerous. I need somebody traced, but discreetly. What does that mean? It means you have to be very careful. And it also means that only you and I know about it. It's very important to me, Julian. I really need this information. A car and a registration number and a Jamaican nurse. Uh -huh. <laughs> Caught a crab, didn't I? No heroics. She's with a man in the KGB called Moskvin. Very dangerous. Secret Life of London Central. Mackenzie rose on the river, you know that? What do you do? I just get fat, Dickie. Feel better and cleaner for exercise. Look at me, I just about worked off that head cold. Want some chaga? Daphne! Jagger! You summoned me. Why is Werner Volkman coming over tomorrow? I didn't know he was. Oh, thank God for that. I was beginning to think I was the only one who didn't know what was going on. I presume Brett's in direct contact with him in Berlin. Trying to breathe new life into his defunct Brahms section. At our expense, Bernard. I'd just like to know who the hell your friend Werner thinks he's working for. Werner's not working for anyone, Dickie. Because no one's paid him yet. 
In theory, he could turn around tomorrow and offer Stinnis to the West Germans and there's damn all we can do about it. Well, it's up to you to make sure he does nothing of the sort. Daphne's got a turbot for tonight. You're bringing the girlfriend. Remember. Oh, hello. Hello. Look, you and I appear to have an invitation tonight. Dickie Cryer likes to meet his staff informally and, well, you are by temporary adoption German desk. I I'm sorry about the short notice. Tonight? Yeah, dinner at half past seven. Miss... Hello. Do you want to sit down? Yes, sir. Mr. Cryer is head of desk, I'm afraid, so he pulls rather a lot of strings. It's the sort of silly social occasion that sometimes has results. I don't have anything to wear. And I can't really come in my work clothes, can I? Oh. I'm not going to have time to go home and change, so it looks as if I'm going to have to go out and buy something, doesn't it? If it's as important as you say it is. Why don't you come with me and help me choose something? Oh, no, no, I'm hopeless at that sort of thing. Look, can I come and use your place as a dressing room? I don't really want to use the loose. Yeah, sure, feel free. Great. I should say no, shouldn't I? Restricted files must in no circumstances be removed from the building and all files are restricted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <don't laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, they do rather drum it into you, don't they? Yeah. Where are your children? They're at their grannies. My mother's. Yes, they still think she's coming back, you see. Yes, so you can't... Can't... quite get rid of her. No. She's very beautiful. I remember her in the office. She was always very polite and very elegant. I'm sorry. I'm sure you don't want me prattling on about her. No, it's okay. Everyone does. She'd be quite amused to listen to some of it. But, um, how do you like it? It's very. It's very elegant. <laughs> then you always are very elegant. Come on. I'll take you to your room. I mean,. Uh, Sorry, I'll take you to a room where you can change. Hello, Samson here, German desk. Julian McKenzie is on Lake Roster. My contact during the evening will be Mr. Cryer's house. Could you pass that on to him, please? Thank you.
rush in to rape the ingredients. Fine cooking. Mom's the arms. Done this very well, Daphne. I'm afraid Dickie was president of Bayreuth College Wine and Food Society. University Wine and Food Society, oh. please, darling. Since you're so knowledgeable, Mr. Cryer, shouldn't you be doing the cooking yourself? <laughs> she won't let me anywhere near the kitchen. Dickie's capable of dirtying five pans, making one poached egg. <laughs> Daphne's taken up stripping, Gloria. Stripping doors, Gloria, and I don't actually do it. I just sell them. You must be the only person in London who hasn't yet heard the joke. I must say, it's, uh, it's quite an event having you here at last. Bernard's talked about you so much. Oh? When? When we were in Mexico. I didn't know you'd been talking about me in Mexico, Bernard. How long have you been in the department, Gloria? Nearly three years now. They told me when I first joined I might be able to take a degree at university. Miss Gloria's a linguist. No, not exactly. When did you last have someone on your German desk who could actually speak the language, darling? I mean, apart from Bernard. Oh, my wife seems to have recruited you already. Next time there's a vacancy. I'm sure you'll like it. Yes, we're all one big happy family on Dickie's desk, playing around with the paper clips. <laughs> Dickie's very nice, isn't he? Yes. Shoots his mouth off sometimes. All the brightest young men go to Balliol, don't they? Well, at least that's what they say. Where did you go? I left school at 16 and went to work. Not for the department. Sort of. But you can't sit the civil service exam at 16. Well, I was in Berlin. That's where I grew up. And knowing the language and being streetwise was all I seemed to need. Paperwork was done later. Well, that was a lovely evening. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Did you say you had some tequila? There's no salt around the room, I'm afraid. No, just lipstick. What was it you were saying about me in Mexico? Did you bet Dickie cry you could get me into bed? No, it was nothing like that. We were talking about staffing and your name came up. Or did you say you already had me in bed? Certainly not. You're a terrible liar, Bernard Sampson. Did anyone ever tell you that? How have you survived so long as a secret agent when you can't even tell one little white lie? You told Dickie we were lovers, didn't you? Admit it. I might have said something that gave him the wrong impression. You see what it's like. I have half an hour to catch the last train. There are three empty bedrooms in the house. It's good night, Mr. Sampson. And thank you for a lovely evening. in midday. Another lunch instead of payment? I'm pushing as hard as I can! Have you heard from Stimis? He's not going to make the first move. He's waiting for my wife to show her legs for Queen and Country. 
I want to be a written back in the book, Bernie. If you're expecting me to pimp my wife, I'm not doing it as a freelance. What do you want? A salary and a pension? I want recognition, that's all. And a fee! I told Zena I'd be coming back with the cash in my hand. Moskin's in London. Cleared him with security. How the hell do you think he got to the door downstairs? The game proceeds, Bernard. No matter how much Dickie flaps with your friend today, he's had a directive to pay the Balkmans, okay? Now you're the file officer. In crude terms, that means you're responsible for the money. In even cruder terms, it means you carry it in your suitcase to Berlin. Tonight. You go back with Volkman and make sure his wife knows what she's meant to be doing before you crackle the greenbacks at her. Well, the payment ought to be made through Werner, you know. No, no. She's the direct link. She's the one you've got to keep your finger on. Pay her in bits and pieces. Installments. Okay. Police call from Sussex and he went rushing off. Rushing off? How? Called a car from the pool. With a driver? No, he went alone. over here and you haven't reported it what if she shops you herself well it's too bloody late to report it now isn't it I suppose that means the kids still think she's coming home you're going to have to tell them sometime Will you take it to lunch? Santinis. He still thinks if he feeds me free lunches, he'll get out of paying me the serious money. Still finalizing the small print, that's what he said. I told him nothing would get done until it is paid. No disparate urgency, he said. your money in my bag and and it gets paid to Zina in installments 
Whose idea was that? Brett. So this pimp doesn't even handle the money. Do you want us to stop? You can't move. Your hands are tight. You try to back off Stennis. London is going to think Moscow is paying you. Don't go away. Yep. Hello. I found the car. Where are you? A place called Bosom. They changed cars. They're in a green BMW now. Where exactly is the car? There's a group of old buildings. Timber clad. That's one of our safe houses. You keep well away. Julian? I hear you, boss. You stay in that car, lock the door, and wait for me, okay? exactly keep your car's low profile, do you? About an hour ago. KGB with the gloves off. Your wife with the gloves off. I told him to sit here and wait for us. He didn't. You think they are still out there? Oh, come on, with a bloody mess like this, they'd be a hundred miles away. You could put out an alert. Sitting on a chair in the middle of the room, with a pistol held against the top of the spine. This is a formal KGB execution. What the hell are you doing? You're not going to leave him here, are you? going to leave him here. I thought we had a plane to catch. Have you come home, Liebchen?
I promise I won't even speak about her. Speak about who, Muthi? You know, it's a funny thing to think that um, she could be just five miles away on the other side of that wall, looking and smelling just the same. How do you know she's still the same? Have you seen her? Well, she never fitted into Berlin. And now we know why. So, no one calls for you? No messages? No voices? And you are quiet like a grave? Lass diesen Quatsch sein, ich halte es nicht mehr aus, so kann es nicht weitergehen. You must pick yourself up, Bernie. We'll have a little drink together. Kirschwasser. Okay. 